Hi everybody. Welcome back to our channel. I'm the Mike. And I'm Shonda. Today we're going to be talking about generational habits and breaking generational habits. And what I mean by that is, you know, things that go from one generation to the next that carry over that are bad habits. Now, I know my family has bad habits. How about yours? Absolutely. All right. So let's go ahead and dig into it. Do you want to go first or you want me to go first? Yeah, first. Okay. So for mine, mine's addiction problems. Now, my family has dealt with addiction problems. Uh, my parents, grandparents, so forth and so on with different things, whether it be like pain medicine or uh, alcohol or drugs or anything of that nature. And what wound up happening is it trickled down into, you know, my generation, of course. And then I've had to deal with alcohol, smoking cigarettes. Whenever I had broke alcohol, I went from that to smoking cigarettes. And then I went from smoking cigarettes to caffeine. So... Mm. For me, it was going from one addiction to another. And, you know, of course, that, that's never good no matter what, what you're addicted to. You know, too much of anything is not a good thing. Right. So, I, for me, what I'm trying to do now for me and my, my future children and stuff like that is just trying to break that kind of bad habit. That's definitely something that I don't want my kids to have. Not even my stepchildren. I don't want them to have any kind of addiction problems and stuff like that. So He said, my future children, like, we have no kids. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that slip out. <laughs> I mean, my, my present children. I, mean, <laughs> I was like, I huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. I know no. what you meant. I yeah. know what you meant. Um, let's see what you got. So, my biggest one for, as far as generational curses or fam bad family habits is the poverty mindset, poverty work ethic, and poverty living. Poverty is so hard to get out of. If you are in poverty, it is hard to pull up out of that ladder. And I feel like growing up um, in my family, in my household specifically, poverty was deemed normal. Like I never realized that there was more available. And I'm so thankful for the internet and social media because at the time like when I was a teenager or middle school going into being a teenager I had no idea those people out here living their best life like I I literally didn't know that that was a thing because you didn't see it like if it wasn't around you you didn't experience it right because you couldn't just get on like Instagram or get on YouTube and watch bloggers traveling and doing this and doing that and so i was used to being around people who were on government assistance i was used to people you know work or living on welfare or you know getting food stamps or you know being roommates with each other or you know like just just different situations where you would hear them trying to one up each other's struggle like what you couldn't get no gas girl I, I couldn't get no gas either I couldn't get no gas and I ain't had no money for food like it was almost like well I don't know the word it's that like I'm looking for it's like competing to see who's got it worse yeah, yeah right and so the poverty thing once I realized that there was actually other things out there and you know available for you to experience that's when I started to try to break that generational curse because I have two boys and I'm like, I don't want them to go through the struggle that I went through. One of the struggles that I feel um, kept me in poverty longer than I would have liked to is because I had my kids really early. For those that don't know, I had my son at early 16 or 15 or 16. I think I had just turned 16 when I had him. And so I was forced to go in the workforce, you know, at an early age before I realized what I wanted to do, before I had any time to still be a teenager and figure out things. And then I had another one at the age of, I think, 20. And so with that, not only am I now forced to take care of myself, became a single mother twice, and then I'm also forced to take care of two other kids and try to fight the poverty curse on top of all of that. So that has been the biggest hurdle as far as the generational curse that I have experienced that I am still in the process of trying to get out of. And then with the um, work ethic. So with the poverty work ethic, it's the belief that if you work harder, then you will be successful or you will, like it will pay off. But there is a such thing as working smarter and not working harder. 
I feel that it's normalized when people live in poverty or they accept being in poverty that if I give a business 60 hours of my time to pay my bills that because I have seniority or because I um, break my back for this company that they're going to look out for you and they're not. <laughs> they're, they're not. So I don't have that belief anymore and that's what I've been working on breaking. I mean, I have to kind of piggyback off of, of, off of you too because my family as well has come from poverty and mm -hmm. they think it's sociably, sociably acceptable to not do anything more than mediocre. Right. And I can't stand that. Right. I don't want to continue doing the nine to five and still not being able to travel and still not be able to do anything on my own. Right. And I realize, just as you said, you know, the corporate world doesn't care about you. In order to actually financially make it, you have to figure out something that you're good at and, you know, get to a point where people pay you for it. Yeah. And that's something I'm, I'm coming to realize now and, you know, trying to instill into my son. Because think about it, guys. The school system, what do they try to do? They try to make you, at best, a cop, firefighter, a uh, teacher, you know, things of that nature. But they don't, they, don't really, they don't really give you the kind of, you know, inspiration to become an astronaut or become something larger than yourself right. you know it's almost like it, even in school to, and this is just my opinion but even in school it's almost like they prepare you to be mediocre for the rest of your life and even in school they give you questions and they give you things that you know like trigonometry and, and stuff like that air to make you feel like you're not smart enough to right. be able to do anything for yourself so then right. whenever you do graduate you do kind of take on whatever you can get your hands on Mm -hmm, so, you gotta pay those bills and those bills right. don't stop once you get a certain age they gonna come <laughs> and i want to piggyback on what you said because i didn't <laughs> write it down on my list but you you brought up a really good one so another one that's not necessarily a curse or a bad habit but i also feel that it is something that i am trying to break or trying to create my own path in is yeah. schooling you hit on a really really good one with the schooling situation i do strongly believe and it has been proven factual factually that they designed school to prepare you to join the workforce like they literally designed school around preparing you to work in a warehouse or you know work in a place to help bigger corporate companies and initially i took my kids out of school because of covid and because of previous situations like with bullying and stuff like that but i've been homeschooling for about two years now has it been it's, it's been, been about, almost as long as we've been together it's been about two years yeah about two years now and i hesitate more and more about putting them back in school because i'm creating a new path for them right yeah. and i'm being able to now teach them about how to create videos teach them about how to plant stuff or teach them about entrepreneurship or teach them how to cook all things that we are not taught in school like these are not things that they don't teach us survival skills right or, and not only that but look at you know like recently what just happened with the school shootings and stuff yeah, like that yeah yeah you know i i mean i just nah I, I i agree with you on the homeschooling thing because i don't want to get that phone call either right but, you know, I, my heart goes out to those individuals. And it's like breaking tradition. I feel like going to public school is tradition. And I've made the decision to break it, not initially for the reasons why I'm continuing to break it now. Initially, it was because of COVID and because of remote schooling. But now it's because I'm starting to be able to teach my kids stuff that is going to keep them from getting into poverty, which goes back to my first point, breaking that generational curse. Okay, so what's your second one? All right, so my second one is sexual problems. Okay, so mm. sex was something that was uh, brought to my chin, my attention at a young age. I was probably five or six, maybe. Um, mm. You know, I've seen a lot of things, you know, especially with, like, family members and stuff like that. And I had family members that would swap partners and stuff like that, things, you know. I've seen things, you know, as far as, like, people having sex and stuff like that at a very young age. And it, you know, it made me, of course, curious. And then I started exploring at a very young age. I think I was like 12 or 13 when I started exploring myself, when I should have just been a kid. You know, when it comes down to our children, we're a little bit more of, we don't give them that type of exposure. You know, we don't let them see naked stuff on TV and stuff like that. 
you know, because right now, like her children, they play toys and stuff like that, and you can that's, tell they're and pure, that's, right? Like, and that's that's good, you know. I, that's what I want them to do. I want them to stay kids, you know. Whenever we were growing up, I grew up too fast. I wish I could have stayed too. a kid a little bit longer than what I did. So I think that's an issue. I'm gonna go ahead and say mine too in reference to that because I have a similar one. Well, it's, it's almost the same. Um, sex, I put sexual exposure at a young age. That one I feel in any family that's watching this, especially my mom, if you're watching this girl, you just don't know. <laughs> you don't know. I am very, very cautious in reference to where my kids go, where my kids stay, what my kids are around, who my kids are around, because of what I experienced as a child. I won't say that I was the M word, because I ain't trying to get strikes or anything on the page, but I won't say that I was that. But I will say that at a young age, and anybody that's a millennial or, um, what's your generation? Gen Z? Gen oh, yeah, X? Exactly. I don't remember. I was in the 80s. Um, I was 80s whatever though. generation that one is. You know, it's normalized to, like, let's go play house. Let's play hide and go get it. You know, like, little, little fun hide games. Hide and go get it? <laughs> you never heard of hide and go get it? <laughs> See? Like, <laughs> tell me, tell me in the oh, comment Lord. section. Lord. If anybody used to play house or hide and go get it, we used to play um, Jerry Springer. But, that, but that's not it. Like, that's yeah. like the... That's like the semi-pure stuff. That's I mean... The, the rated G version? Yeah, that's the rated G version. Like, no, we did some stuff. And I remember even as young as three of the stuff going down between me and another kid. And I told my mom, not knowing, like, I wasn't supposed to do that. Like, they wanted me to do something to them. And I was like, they was like, if you do this to me, then I'll let you play my game. And I was like, what? Okay. And so I did it. And I was doing it every day. Like... And he would let me play the game. And then one day he did something he wasn't supposed to do. And then I ended up saying something to my mom. And then there was the whole thing. She told the whole family. And it was embarrassment. But I remember that. I remember to this day. And I was, I know, like three or four, maybe. And that wasn't the only thing that has ever happened. Like, I have a list of things that happened growing up. All the way up until I became maybe like 10 or 12. But like I look at my kids' phones like randomly just to see like what they talk about with their friends and you know like just cause I'm curious because I remember like I was watching porn at a young age. You know? Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. going sneaking in the um living room to watch HBO at twelve o'clock. You know, mm -hmm. like just just little things that I yeah. remember like how old I was and then being like, wow. And so for me, I remember when and how these things went down. And so like, if I go over a friend's house or like, let's say there's a family having like a, a gathering. And you know how when family have gatherings, the kids go upstairs in the room and like, dude, my kids ain't doing that. <laughs> because I remember what went down. When the kids used to be by themselves and the parents was downstairs doing whatever, like I remember what we used to do. So that's one of the things that I am really adamant about breaking right. in my household because I came out okay, but thankfully it wasn't ever grown ups. Like it And I'ma tell you, you know, watching like her kids actually play. Yeah. It's it's so beautiful to see the the, the pureness in them, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, that's cool. And going like, through their phone and seeing that they're not talking right. about anything sexual, right. you know, like yeah, they're talking about like Fortnite. Yeah, because like you like, could if, cool. if I had what they have at the yeah. age that they're at. <laughs> oh my god! Well, their technology is way better than what we had too. Yeah, man. it is. It is. So that's that's one that is really really big for me. I think that I'm doing a good job. I also make sure that in reference to that, I stay on top of communication right. um, in reference to, you know, them not ever feeling uncomfortable coming to me if something has happened, you know, that has made them feel uncomfortable, whether it be between another another child or whether it be from a grown up, you know? You know, you really hit on a, another point that I didn't even write down is communication. That That's something that... I really, really admire uh, that that we do. Like yeah. we have open communication with the kids, and yeah. even my communication with my son, no matter what he gets into, he'll call me yeah. because I don't 
yell at him. I don't scream at him. I, you know, I, I let him know that, you know, we, we all make mistakes, but I don't want him to be scared to call his dad. You know, yeah. call me when you got something going on. So I, I really enjoy that we do that, mm -hmm. that we have that kind of communication. I think that's probably what makes us a, such a powerful family. Yeah. All right, let's see what else we got. Ooh, <laughs> family forgiveness. All right, so this is going to be a good one for me. My family is a type of family that they will screw each other over. They... Like I said, they, oh, yeah, I know yep, where you're going. <laughs> they have slept with each other's partners, things like that, uh, stole from each other. And I remember growing up, my mom would forgive people in my family and they would be right back over at the house having Sunday dinner and stuff like that. You right, need to right, feel right, like... right. <laughs> after, oh, no. after what they went through and yeah. I'm just like, or they'll call and, and cuss them out, call them out by their name, dog them out, say some of the most. If you guys heard stuff. some of the unforgiving yeah. stuff that these people have said to each other, it's like, and then they just let it go. And they, for, they forgive them. At, they're family. This is what I, let me tell you what I heard now. They're family. You just, you got to forgive them. Okay. Mm. No. Yeah. All right. So let me tell you, mm -hmm. I don't believe in that. I'm sorry. I don't. And I, it may offend somebody out there that's watching this video and I don't really care because I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to be, I, well, I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> This is my opinion, um, and I can't speak for everybody else, but if you screw me over, I'll forgive you, of course, but you will not be allowed around me again, period. You're not going to get the opportunity to bite me again. You know what I mean? A snake, if you pick up a snake and it bites you, are you going to pick the snake up again? No. And a snake is a snake. I'm sorry. At the end of the day, people are who they are, mm -hmm. and you can forgive them all you want. It's just a matter of time for they to do it again. I don't care. That's just, how, that's just what I believe. So in my family, I'm very protective over my family. You know, I don't want to bring people around that are going to, you know, be attracted to my spouse and want to try to say some slick stuff when I'm not around. Or if we allowed them here, they would steal something and take it to the pawn shop or something like that. I'm not going to do that. That's lower vibrational people and they're not allowed around my circle. And that's one of the generational curses, I guess, is, our you know, our habits, well, however you want to word it, one of the things that I want to break, because what I'm trying to do is get to a place of higher than what I, what I currently am and what I've currently experienced in my lifetime. And in order to do that, some people got to go. Mm -hmm. You can't carry, you can't carry everybody with you on their journey. Right. Now I'm not saying, you know, I'm not sitting here trying to dog out my family. I still love my family. Don't get me wrong, but sometimes you have to love people from a distance. And that's something I truly believe is loving people from a distance. Yeah. I put, I put instead of family forgiveness, I put accepting toxic treatment. Oh, That's well, what I yeah, put. Yeah, yeah. Um, because, man, okay, <laughs> hold on, let me, let me get comfortable, okay? Let me, let me put my feet up in the chair real go. quick. First of all, you're not going to do me like how I done seen some people do some family members because it ain't going to happen, okay? I have some very toxic family members. Okay, and if you're offended and you're my family member, I'm talking about you, like, <laughs> period, okay? Because literally, I am not close to my immediate family because they are toxic. And if you are in my immediate family and you are offended, I am talking about you, okay? And I'm going to explain so that way you can understand because you might not know that you're being toxic. You might, you might not even understand... Like, what, what is toxic, you know? Tell him, baby, tell him. I'm going to tell him. Okay, first of all, like, kind of like what he said. If we go back and forth about something that you have done that is, like, unforgivable or, yeah. like, you've done me dirty or, you know, you've treated me a certain type of way that has passed a boundary. And I don't even just mean on one occasion because sometimes you may fall out with someone. You may have a disagreement, miscommunication, Whatever, I get that. But if this is who you are, that's when it's different. If you consistently treat me a certain type of way or do things to F over me, then I'm going to step back and I'm not going to include you in my circle anymore. And what that means is not only am I not going to include you in my circle, I'm not going to go out of my way to be around you because I have no desire to be around that type of energy, right? I have no desire to allow you or enable you to continue the behavior on me because the first time it's like okay shame on you second time shame on me because you done showed me and i'm deciding to continue to be around you 
You see what I'm saying? And so I don't play that. I don't play that. And you don't even, the thing about it is you don't even have to do it to me. So I found myself in reference to like my situation with my mom. I found myself on defense of how people were treating her. Right. Because I was like, why would they treat you like that? You done did this. You done did that. You done did this. And then I would hear the whole spill of I ain't messing with them no more. They ain't gonna hear from me no more. Da, 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 da. And then two days later, you've been chilling at their house and buying them groceries. Like that doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense to me. And so for me, I'm like, OK, if you do not match the vibration of people or energy that I desire to be around, then I am okay, family or not, not allowing you to be around me. And I want to make sure I teach my children that you do not have to accept, to accept toxic treatment just because they are family members. Right. You do not have to accept that. I have situations in reference to like my youngest son. There are certain things that he's dealing with in reference to certain things. I ain't ready to out that in public yet, but I'm slowly but surely starting to put in his ear, like you need to stand up for yourself. Like regardless of who this person is, if this makes you feel uncomfortable or if this makes you feel a certain type of way about yourself and they're constantly saying this to you, you need to tell them that you don't like that. And if they don't like that, you don't like that, then that's their problem. Like you shouldn't have to adjust how you feel about yourself because someone's normal behavior is making you feel a certain type of way, you know? So that's mine. Yeah. I mean, you said it. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play about that one. Oh man. Okay. So the last one I have is anger issues. That's a lot. You only got four? Huh? Yeah, well, because I got the family accept the mediocre acceptance. Um, that's actually the fifth one I'm going over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyhow, um, anger issues. So my grandfather and my mother have anger issues, right? And it has definitely trickled down in, into my generation. I fight <laughs> with anger issues all the time. And even when I, ever since I got with you, she has definitely been patient in helping me, you know, try to calm down. I don't, <laughs> yeah, you see her laughing. Yeah, it's. Uh, I want to give you the reference because when I hear you say you have anger issues, like I have a visual for every time he has like a moment, like when he has one of his anger moments. If you've ever seen the movie Inside Out and they have the different emotions in the little girl's head or whatever. The anger one that has a fire that comes out every time something happens, that's Michael. <laughs> that's Michael. Oh my God. The way he get like routed up and then he'll like calm down like this in a second if something changes. Yeah, it's I mean, it's definitely, you know, people don't realize <laughs> <laughs> people really don't realize what you give on to your, your children. You yeah. Know? And when you're being raised and you see like you know your mom because like i said my mom she was no joke she 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 would beat you up in a heartbeat man she actually beat up a guy's car one time with a baseball bat because he owed my dad fifty dollars <laughs> she this was about that life <laughs> right and then her dad of course was like some type of mafia type thing i don't i don't want to get too far into to all that but anyhow what i'm trying to say is they had a lot of anger issues and you know as i'm getting older now I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to tell you right now, as I'm getting older, the madder I get, the more <laughs> it wears out my body. Like you got to recover. <laughs> yeah. I got to like recover now. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, anger takes out so much energy. And to be honest with you, it's not even cool anymore. I used to think it was real cool when I was in my 20s, but now I really don't like getting mad about things. And yeah. when I do get mad, it takes... A long time to calm down so it's definitely been you know like something days yeah yeah it takes uh it definitely takes a couple of days for me to kind of calm down on the uh, depending on what it is you know of course but and luckily i'm getting to a place now where it's getting it's it is better than it used to be and yeah. i'm trying to get better to to you know that because i don't want the kids to, to to see anger as you know a common thing you know what i mean and like I that always go to way to Right, you know, express right. Express their emotion. And so I try to explain to the kids, even my own kid, even actually, yeah, even Joseph said last time I was down there, uh, he told you, he's like, that's come down a lot. Yeah. Um, but it's just because I want to make sure that I 
am a good figure to the children, you know, to her kids and my son and stuff like that and, and teach them, you know, anger really never solved any of my problems. To be honest with you, it never solved any problem. Not one problem got solved by anger. Right. So let me know in the comments before I say my next one, because I think I got one or two more. Um, what is a generational curse that you are trying to break? Or it doesn't even have to be a generational curse, a bad family habit that is happening in your family that you don't want to pass down to your right. children. Or something that's acceptable in your, in your previous families and stuff right. like that. That you feel, hey, this is not acceptable. Right, right. Let us know in the comment section below. And then my last one is gossip. I feel like everybody gossips at least a little tiny bit. Like, at least a little bit. Very minimum. Very minimum. You won't find me on the phone with my friends spending an hour talking about somebody's situation. Someone else's situation. I grew up with that. I grew up with that and I knew about everybody's situation around me, all family members' situation, people that went in my family situation. Mm -hmm. I knew everybody's situation in their house. Everybody. And I got so sick of hearing about what everybody else had going on. And so it's like, for me, that's a whole nother level of toxic energy as well. Because you gossiping about other people is not in any way going to benefit benefit you or your life at all. I'd rather take that energy in reference to gossiping. I'd rather take that energy towards something productive to push my needle forward. And I don't even like to hear about gossip. Like, it strongly irritates me. It grinds my gears. Yeah, I come... It does. I, I also come from a family of gossipers. Everybody knows everything. You can't tell anybody any of your Nothing. business. Um, and I can't... Like, me personally, I can't stand it. I can't... I don't care what's going on in somebody else's household. That's their business. That's not my business. And... Shoot, even now that I'm getting old, I really don't care what people, um, you know, gossip about me anymore because it's not my business either. Right, um, right. But yeah, they, they used to do that. Yeah, I agree with you 100% on the gossiping though. Yeah, we don't gossip in this house. No. We don't. We don't yeah. gossip in this house. And, and we don't have jealousy issues in this house either. That's yeah. another big thing. Yeah. My family, let me tell you something. They're there for you when you're struggling. But, but if you do good and you have nicer things... They'll dog the heck out of you, man. And then they'll gossip about you. And then they'll dog your name and stuff like that. And it's like uh, a lot of jealousy in my family, too. And yeah. I don't understand that. Because if you're doing good, I love it. I, I'm happy that you're doing good. I want to see you do better, you know. But I think the best way, so. I think the best way to break a lot of the generational curses or bad habits that we've mentioned is to raise your vibration. What I mean by that is you have to change the people that you're around. Like yeah. if you're in a situation where you're experiencing the things that we have mentioned yeah. and it is it's something that you know doesn't feel right, right. but you're kind of like stuck being around it, you do have power in that situation because you can't change who people are. You can't change what they do. You can't change who they talk about, what they talk about. You can't change that. Right. But you can choose what you allow to be around you. And I would like to go as far as to say, not just, you know, changing people. You can change where you're at. Right. You know, I had to give up where I was living at because to me, that place is toxic. Right. It's not even just the people. The place was toxic. You can right. ask her the last time I went back to my hometown, I was stressed. Yeah. Just going into that town for an hour, I was stressed out. Right. And you can feel it. You can feel when you're in a certain vibration of people or of, or energy. And right. so when you hear people say, raise your vibration, it's a magnitude of different things. Because once you cut out everything, right? Like once you start cutting out people that only gossip or people that are secretly in competition with you or you know when people have malicious intentions, like yeah. they may not deliberately say it to you. But you have to think about it. If they're eager to get on the phone to gossip with you about all these other people, like every time, it's okay, like every now and then, like little stuff here and there. But if that's all they have to talk about, you know they gossiping about you. Like yeah. that's all they know what to do. That's all they know how to do. So you need to remove yourself from those people, from those things. If it's like a, a house or 
a city, like your hometown or whatever, remove yourself. People place yourself. their things. People if place their things. If it's yeah. negative, it's not for you and you right. don't let it go. And then when you, how you raise your vibration is once you remove everybody and move everything, move the place or whatever, then you replace those people with people that talk about the same things that you like to talk about Goals, or, right, reasons. or talk about things that you inspire to learn about. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this person is talking about something I've never heard of before. Like, let me look into that. You start raising your vibration of, yeah. and being around people that are making more money. People they're not work. struggling. Yeah. You know, they're enjoying their life. They're not having bad relationships left or, you know, left and right, right and making bad decisions left and right. Like, that's when you start raising your vibration. Yeah, get with people that you can learn from, that you can yeah. grow from. Right. And change yeah. the type of events and activities that you allow you know yourself to go to you don't have to go to the clubs and go to the bars just because everybody else is doing it like you can go to a concert or go to like a cooking class or whatever it is that is going to be positive that is going right. to push your needle forward and is going to give you entertainment that you desire yeah, that's how you raise your vibration you need quality over quantity all day yeah. long so. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you stay to the end, then you are the real VIPs for us or MVPs. Is yeah. it MVPs or VIPs? MVP. You're the real MVPs. Okay, thank you. Make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to our channel so that you will be notified when we have future uploads. But until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.